Welcome to Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. You can find us at lcara.net, on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Instagram. If you're enjoying the videos we're producing here at Elcara, please help our club out by hitting that subscribe button. Also, give us some feedback on our videos. Click the like button, share with anybody who may find it interesting, and be sure and hit the bell icon to make sure you get notified of the next video release. Welcome back to the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association's YouTube channel. Today we have a treat, the installation of a brand new repeater, not just any repeater, a D-Star repeater. Now I need to give a special shout out to uh, several individuals that helped make this happen. First, Steve, KD4ADJ for helping put the repeater together. Larry, NN4H for helping us with the idea and concepts and uh, KK4KTV for kind of spearheading the project to make sure that Lake Kimberlin Amateur Radio Association has a D-Star repeater and coordinated and so forth. And uh, one more person, Ray, KY4RW, Ray donated the equipment for the repeater to make this project happen. AC4DM and I are looking over the cabinet in this particular case. He's got all kinds of older equipment that we've repurposed over the years. Of course, he was repurposing equipment before I even came along. And we're making sure that we're going to move the duplexers in the right place. They're not pictured here. They're right above my head if, uh, if the picture was a little wider. But we needed to move the duplexers down to make room for the new radios, in this case the repeaters for D-Star. You can see the fusion repeater from the front in that previous picture. And now we're looking at the back. Why am I showing you the back of the fusion repeater? Well, because uh, the duplexers that we need to move need to be disconnected from the repeater in a safe way. So remove the power from the repeater, both the AC power and the DC power, and then disconnect the duplexer cables so that they wouldn't be in the way. The duplexer again was at the top. Now we're moving it to the bottom, which is sneaking into the frame here at the bottom of the picture. Here we've already moved it, and you can see that uh, we're in the process of putting the cables back on. Now, I actually learned a really valuable lesson on this particular trip because the duplexers are special in that you have an antenna output and input. You also have a high frequency input on the left and a low frequency input on the right, making sure that you connect the, connect the, connect the cables correctly from the repeater. Uh, to the duplexers is a must and uh, that's something we'll show a little bit later here in the video. Here I am reconnecting some of the cables uh, on the duplexer in this particular case. Uh, the duplexer is set up for 70 centimeters for our uh, club's uh, 70 centimeter repeater, our Yesu Fusion repeater, and uh, getting my hands a little dirty today. KY4CKP and I were uh, doing most of the work on the inside of the shack while AC4DM was taking care of things on the outside of the shacks, uh, specifically the antenna that we're going to use for the new D Star repeaters. And there's KY4CKP moving some of the clips around on the cabinet to make sure we had a place for the D-Star uh, brackets to uh, connect to or screw in and uh, so he's making sure that that's being taken care of. Uh, so we were doing most of the work on the inside and that's uh, through trust from AC4DM. He's been showing us what needs to be done over the last year and a half so that we can take over this stuff down the road. So he let us do most of the work on the inside uh, and uh, that was really cool. We had a lot of fun. Here's the open space where the duplexer used to be and that's where the D-Star is going to go. Uh, sadly, we didn't get a shot of the D-Star for some reason uh, installed in that top portion underneath those speakers. And in fact, the speakers came out as well. But uh, in any event, uh, we're finishing up the duplexer reinstallation down at the bottom. And you can see it in its new place from the front panel. Uh, and so I'm just screwing those in. As luck would, uh, or bad luck would have it, I, I screwed them in incorrectly. I had the wrong cables on the wrong input. So as you'll see in a few minutes, AC4DM had to come in and do some quality assurance. But you can see the duplexers installed here. I can't remember if this was correctly installed or we actually had to move a couple of cables around. Uh, but you can kind of see what it looks like from the back. Uh, wonderful piece of equipment to make sure that unwanted frequencies don't hamper your actual frequencies you're using for the repeater itself, in this case 70 centimeters. They're interesting, they're passive in their utilization, but they work great and they're not inexpensive. 
Here we're looking at uh, AC4 DM's Anderson Power Pool Kit. Everybody should have one of these folks. In fact, we have a hands-on with Aero Cara, an activity that we just began. We're going to show people how to take a kit like this and build patch cables uh, for uh, on your own so you don't have to buy your patch cables. Uh, and it's a lot less expensive. Anderson Power Poles, the contacts for 15, 30, and 45 amps, crimpers, and wire strippers all kind of come together. So uh, if you don't have a kit, put one together. Here's quality assurance coming back into the shack and making sure that KY4, CKP, and myself were doing things correctly. Uh, KY4, CKP did his parts correct. I actually had a couple of cables in the wrong location, so he put those in the right locations. Great having an Elmer teach you what needs to be done uh, when it comes to uh, moving some things around and installing new equipment as well. So AC4DM is going to finish up the quality assurance. We're going to take you outside where he was busy on work day putting the antenna together. Uh, we have the antenna and this long arm uh, that it's attached to. Here you can see him tightening up some of the screws to make sure the antenna is not going to go anywhere once we get it up on the tower. And uh, in this particular case, we also wanted to make sure that the cable that you see coming out of the back is also properly zip tied, which we'll show you in just a minute. The tower had uh, an antenna on it that needed to come down, so we removed an antenna to uh, kind of make room for this one. Here we have the stingers installed on the uh, new GP1 from Comet. As some of you guys that have been observing the channel for a while know, Comet antennas are our favorite antennas when we're working on the tower for uh, the omnidirectional use uh, that they provide. And uh, so you can see a pretty good mock there, a uh, pretty good picture of uh, the front side, if you will, or the top side of the antenna that AC4DM was working on to get it ready for the tower. And then the last picture we have here is the antenna on the arm, but now you can see the cable uh, that we were using. I want to say it's LMR 400 uh, uh, being properly nylon tied to the arm and to make sure that uh, uh, that we have a drip line or a drip um, angle, if you will, or turn in the cable uh, when uh, it's in inclement weather and also making sure that the cable is not putting any stress uh, on the uh, antenna itself where it would work its way loose or in some cases uh, uh, bend in a way that's unnatural. One of our tower monkeys, folks, these are a rare breed of animal. If you don't have a tower monkey, you find one, even if you have to pay somebody. But here we have KK4 KTV up on the tower and he's making sure that we're installing that arm correctly. Now, Today, on this particular day, we needed two pair of hands. So there's one pair, and uh, we're making sure we get that GP1 installed in the right places. And uh, notice safety always comes first when you're on these towers. Here's our second tower monkey, who will come into frame here in just a minute as far as his head. This is KK4JPX, and uh, he's got his own harness as well. So we had a couple of monkeys that day, making sure that we put everything where it needs to be. And having two pair of hands on this particular trip, taking down an antenna and putting up a brand new antenna, will really, really worked out well. So. Uh, uh, just wonderful and I didn't get a chance to climb the tower this particular time because I was inside the shack so we had like six or seven people working simultaneously to get this repeater installed tower folks shack folks antenna folks and people ferrying up tools and so forth utilizing a pulley system which we'll see in a shot coming up here in just a minute here's the guys working in tandem uh, again getting that new antenna installed you can see the arm extending uh, away from the tower. So as we move into the next frame here, we're going to see some of the guys working on the ground. So AC4 DM, after uh, putting the antenna together, was helping ferry up some tool pouches so the guys would have the tools they need to install the antenna. There's Ben climbing the tower, and you're going to see the tool pouch here come into frame in a few moments. KK4 KTV is already at the height that he needed to be and completely harnessed in and safety buckled. There goes that tool pouch, and uh, AC4DM is ferrying that up. And we have another person pulling the other part of the line to uh, take that pouch up to them, and that's uh, KK4 KTV's father down at the bottom. W4PPW was taking care of some of the rust that we had here on the main door. It looks worse than it is, but there were a couple of spots on this door that needed some Bondo, and we're going to be painting this in the near future. So we've got just a little bit more work to do, but not much. And then a fresh coat of white paint will be on the door ready to go. We had a couple other guys working on the other side of the shack as well, scraping and getting that loose paint chip loose. 
couple other guys were also trimming and weeding around the shack. Here we have KK4YUG and W4PPW as well uh, with the uh, weed whacker and uh, knocking down some of that brush. This is tick heaven up on this knob, and uh, we need to keep the uh, tall grasses down so we don't pick up as many critters while we're on our work days. And uh, folks, projects like this are a lot of fun. And we had eight or nine people at work day. Um, it, it just makes everything go by so quickly and you get so much work done when you have this many people on a work day helping out. Here's some of us talking while we wait for uh, Ben and Brian to finish up on the tower. Folks, uh, get involved in a club. These kinds of activities will help you learn and help show you what is necessary uh, to communicate with our ham radios. It's not just free and it doesn't happen out of the blue. For the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association, I'm KY4BDP Brian. I hope you like this video on the installation of D-Star 73s.